Sister Agnes was one of the most loved nuns in the convent, but things went awry when her stomach began to grow, and a large controversy threatened to get her kicked out of the convent. But then, a hidden camera revealed the things she'd been doing with a priest. At that time, tension and uncertainty were high in the convent. Things looked bleak and no one was sure when the wind of change was going to blow. The tension was palpable, and it could be felt in just about everything that happened in the convent. Everyone had the same thoughts during their quiet moments. When they whispered among themselves, they talked only about one thing, and it was about Agnes and her scandal. Agnes was a nun, and one of the most devout and prayerful ones. But unlike the other nuns, Agnes was pregnant. She had gotten pregnant while she was in the convent, and because she was sworn to a life of celibacy, thanks to the vows she made when she joined the order, it was quite a serious issue. Everyone she knew was disappointed in her, from her fellow sisters to her superiors in the convent. Agnes used to be the shining star of the convent, and her colleagues looked up to her. She was known for being steadfast and hardworking. She was never one to shy away from work, and she was always quick to lead her team to get the job done. Everyone knew that whatever project Agnes was placed in charge of would surely be a success. Agnes wasn't just known within the convent, she was known outside as well. People loved her, including the elderly and the little children, simply because she had a soft spot for them. However, despite how kind and nice she was, she was known to be strict when enforcing the rules of the convent. She couldn't stand for breaking any rules, and she made sure that whoever engaged in such violation was punished accordingly. Many times, when the mother superior had to go away from the convent, she would leave Agnes in charge. She was confident that Agnes would be able to proffer solutions if any problem came up. Agnes was like their poster nun, and because of her alone, people had more goodwill towards the convent. However, things took a drastic turn in a way none of them could have ever imagined. The other nuns at the convent began to notice that Agnes' stomach began to swell up. As each day passed, it only grew bigger. And soon, it was glaring that Agnes was pregnant. This was a huge blow to the convent and everything it stood for. They knew how devastating it would be for them if news of her pregnancy got out. Due to how well known she was, a scandal like that might cripple the convent and also affect its funding as well. A nun getting pregnant while she was in the convent was something that the blogs and online magazines would have a field day with. However, the most troubling aspect of the situation wasn't just that. What truly frightened them about the news potentially spreading was the identity of the baby's father. They all knew it was Father Julius a priest assigned to assist them at the convent. From the moment he arrived at the convent, he and Agnes were always together. They spent as much time in each other's company as possible, often for extended periods. They were frequently spotted around the convent, whether sitting on the grass or on the benches outside. They preferred privacy and would pause their conversations whenever someone approached, only to resume once they were alone again. Soon, the other nuns in the convent began to suspect that the duo were up to something. Rumors began flying that they were secretly dating, but neither of them cared. They refused to acknowledge the rumors and kept living their lives like all was right with the world. The nuns tried everything they could to put an end to their despicable friendship, but whatever they did or said, nothing worked. Agnes remained as close as possible to Julius. With time, the situation only got worse. Reports began to circulate that Agnes was sneaking out of her quarters in the middle of the night just to go and spend time with Julius. The nuns were sure about this because each morning, Agnes's bed would look well laid, as if no one had slept on it the previous night. The nuns continued confronting her, but Agnes kept denying the allegations. She told them that she and Julius were good friends, and nothing else was going on between them. Her words fell flat because no one believed her at all. Everyone could see that she was lying about what they were doing. However, things all came to a head when Agnes's belly began to swell up. It was as if the evidence everyone had been waiting for had finally come. Agnes was finally pregnant, and this was proof that indeed she and the priest had been engaged in an affair. However, to their shock, Agnes denied it all. She told them that she wasn't pregnant, 
and also reminded them that nothing was going on between her and Julius. At this point, the mother superior realized that, as long as they had no evidence, Agnes would never admit to the abominable act. More so, they couldn't take any action against her until she confessed. The mother superior and her counsel then decided to get the evidence themselves. They already knew that Agnes and Julius could barely go a day without seeing each other, so they decided to use that against them. They set up hidden cameras all over the convent and in places where they were sure that both Julius and Agnes frequented. They wanted to catch them in the act. Then Agnes would have no choice but to confess. Agnes couldn't believe that her life was falling apart like this. In all the years she had spent at the convent, it was hard to imagine that something like this would be the very thing that would threaten her life there. As a little girl, Agnes never imagined that she would become a nun. She had never thought that the holy and pious life at the convent would come to be such an integral part of her life. This was because her childhood had been plagued with different kinds of horrors, one that no child should ever have to go through. Agnes's father was a popular pastor. He had a big church that had thousands of members from all over the city. When they held programs, people came from all over the country to attend, and it was always a mega event. Her father was a beacon of society, and he was loved by all due to his generous heart. Almost every family in the area had benefited from his generosity in one way or the other, as so he was held in high regard and treated like royalty. Sadly, all this was a facade. It was a mask he put on to deceive the people to love him. At home, he was a monster to his wife and daughter. He never hesitated to raise his hands against Agnes's mom, even at the slightest provocation. He did it so often. Many times, he hit her hard enough that she would be severely injured. Afterward, he would take her to the hospital and lie to the doctors that she had fallen down the stairs, and they all believed him due to his status. None of them found it suspicious when she kept coming to the hospital with the same excuse of falling down the stairs. No one cared to investigate because no one expected the highly revered pastor to be a liar and a violent man. Many times, Agnes's mom tried to report it to the police, but it always backfired. They saw her as a wicked woman who was only trying to bring down an influential man in the village. When she saw that no one was on her side, she tried to run away with Agnes, but the pastor used the police to track them and bring them back home to him. These were some of the terrible days of Agnes's life, but things were only about to get worse for her. When she was a teenager, her mother eventually passed. She had been trying to run away as usual when a car hit her. Sadly, she didn't make it. This made things worse for Agnes because it meant that her father would shift his attention to her, and that was exactly what he did. The pastor simply made life hellish for his young daughter. He was quick to anger, easily irritated, and would pounce on Agnes whenever she made the slightest errors. He also took out his frustrations with the church and its members on her. Just like her mother, Agnes tried to report it to the police, but she was always sent back home. The pastor told them that she was a troubled kid ever since her mother had died, so whatever it was that she told them afterward, they took it with a pinch of salt. Eventually, she came to realize that no one would help her. She had to rely on herself if she was going to make it out alive. She didn't want to end up like her mother, and she swore that she was going to get out from under her wicked father's thumb. One day, during a mega event that her father's church was organizing, she seized the opportunity to run away. While he was preaching, she snuck out of the house and hit the road. She made sure she was well disguised, because almost everyone in the city knew she was the daughter of the pastor. If they saw her going too far away from the church premises, they would definitely tell him. And that was the last thing Agnes wanted. Agnes also avoided the cops and hid when a patrol vehicle drove by. Luckily, she got to the village outskirts without being seen. From there, she ran as fast as her legs could carry. She had no destination in mind. She just kept running away from her monstrous father. When night fell, she slept in the garage of an empty house. When the day broke, she continued running. She used the money she had saved up to buy food when she was hungry. By the third night, when she was looking for where she would rest her head, she found the convent. By then, she was tired and hungry from all the walking she had done, and she begged them for accommodation. They immediately took her in. 
fed her, and gave her a place to stay. She lied to them that she had no family because she was sure that they would take her back to her father if they knew. Agnes's plan was only to stay at the convent for a short time. However, within a few months, she fell in love with life at the convent. It was so peaceful and everyone was free and happy. There was nothing to be scared of. It was entirely different from the kind of life she'd grown up in. She loved it so much that by the time she was of age, she decided to become a nun. And she had never regretted the decision. She believed that it was the best one she ever made after running away from her evil father. Recovering from the trauma of what her father did to her wasn't easy, but she was ready to do everything she could to make sure that her life was free from the darkness of her past. And that was what she'd been doing. Her life in the convent was perfect, and it became even more beautiful when Julius came around. He was the first man she was spending so much time with since she left her father. Julius saw her in a way no one else did, which was why she was so comfortable with him. It was hurtful that the moment when she believed that she finally had everything, it was all going to dust, simply because of the rumors that surrounded her. It got worse when they called a meeting. Agnes was made to stand in the middle of everyone. Each of them shot daggers at her and pointed at her huge belly. Embarrassed and furious, Agnes yelled that everything they had said against her was nothing but false accusations. Just then, the mother superior said she had proof. The elderly woman was close to tears. She was the only one who wished the allegations weren't true. I trusted you, Agnes. Oh, dear Agnes, why did you sin against the Lord? She said and brought out a camera. She told Agnes that the camera contained video footage of what she had been doing with the priest. They gave her one more chance to confess. They wanted to avoid replaying the shameful act, but she urged them to go ahead and play it. It was time for them to get to the truth of the matter once and for all. So they played the footage of Agnes meeting up with Julius. But to their shock, nothing they had expected happened. They thought they would see Agnes breaking her vows with Julius, but they were wrong. The two only met to talk to each other. As they listened to the conversation, they got one major revelation. Julius had a major in psychiatry. Agnes told them that the moment she found out his major, she knew that he could help her overcome the trauma she was suffering from. Thankfully, Julius was welcoming and he was happy to help her, especially after he heard the horrible things she had been through as a child. So they started meeting as often as they could, trying to overcome the pain and hurt that had taken years to accumulate and was still affecting her. Even as an adult, Agnes still had nightmares of her father. Many times, she would wake up in the middle of the night, sweating profusely. Her heart beat loudly in her chest as she looked around her room in panic, half expecting her father to be standing beside her with a belt in his hand. When such things happened, she would call Julius for help, and regardless of the time, he was always ready to help her through her pain and trauma. Agnes understood the potential consequences of being seen with the priest, especially since she had visited his room several times. She had asked him to keep the true purpose of their meetings hidden. Keeping their session secret was crucial for her, because revealing them would also expose her lies about her father since entering the convent. Fearful of expulsion, she was willing to endure the scandal, knowing that as long as she didn't take any action, there would be no repercussions due to lack of evidence. When she was done talking, the hall fell quiet as her words sank in. They were all shocked that she had been through so much as a child. The Agnes they knew was always full of smiles and ready to help, yet she had challenges she'd been secretly battling. Agnes said that she knew that if she had been honest from the beginning, things wouldn't have escalated to that point. But now that everyone knew, she was finally free from the burden of keeping it all inside her. Everyone was touched by her words. Due to everything she had been through, they could see that she deserved all the help she could get. However, there was still the issue of pregnancy. One of the nuns even whispered that Father Julius had taken advantage of Sister Agnes. The nun immediately jumped to his rescue and said that nothing ever happened between them. Neither of them broke their vows. She insisted that she wasn't pregnant, 
but her visibly swollen stomach told a different story. Eventually, the council decided to take her to the hospital so they could run a test on her. That very day, she was taken to see a doctor, and the test was done. Agnes was in support of this because she was tired of the rumors that kept flying around about her. She wanted to put a stop to it all. To everyone's shock and delight, the result of the pregnancy came back negative. She wasn't pregnant. This shocked everyone because she definitely looked pregnant. They ran other tests on her and discovered a shocking truth. Agnes had a tumor in her stomach. It was a lump and it was growing with each passing day, giving the illusion of a pregnancy. If it had been allowed to grow any further, it would have seriously endangered her life. Agnes was shocked. She had never known that her health was in jeopardy. She never suspected that things were that bad. She had simply assumed that she was gaining weight and didn't think much of it. She became terrified, but the doctors assured her that she would be fine. All she needed was an operation to get the tumor out of her stomach. At once, she was admitted to the hospital. The operation was done. It was a safe procedure that took only a few hours. By the time it was over, Agnes's stomach had returned to its normal size. Everyone was happy that she was safe and she had not broken her vows as they had feared. They knew that without the scandal, they would never have asked her to take the pregnancy test. And without that pregnancy test proving negative, they would never have figured out that she had a tumor. It was as if everything that happened had been for a reason, and it was for her good. They forgave her for lying to them about her father. They knew why she did it, and it was a reason they could all accept. They also promised her that she was no longer alone. They would all do their best to help her fully overcome her trauma, just as she had always been helping others. Agnes was so happy. She couldn't believe that such good things could come from the scandal that had almost sent her packing from the convent. She was especially glad that she could finally talk about the horrible things she had gone through as a child without fear of getting kicked out. It was like a huge weight had been lifted off her shoulders. She was also done hiding, which was inadvertently protecting her father. She was no longer a scared child, and she was going to make sure the world knew who her father was. She felt that it was high time he stopped deceiving people with his lies, because it was only a matter of time before someone else became his victim. She promised that she would remain steadfast to her vows and keep striving to be the best nun that she could ever be. What a beautiful story. What would you have done in Agnes's shoes? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.